If I could kiss my dermatologist, I would, but it would be very inappropriate because she's the one, she's the one who a couple of years ago, maybe two years ago, said, try this one, try Skinnerun azelaic acid 20% for your acne. And when I started using it, guys, I realized how much money I have spent on just regular skincare without any results. Azelaic acid, one of the most underrated skincare ingredients. We've been talking about it for a long time. We've integrated this into a lot of our routine videos, but we've never talked about the ingredient by itself. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about is azelaic acid worth the hype? how to use it in your skincare routine, what is it, who is it for, what not to use it with, what to layer it with, everything related to azelaic acid. Right, so this ingredient, is it a hero, is it a supporter? I'm about split on the viral videos because it is having a moment, but I think about half of the time it's kind of for the wrong reasons. Azelaic acid, here we go. Here we go. So what is azelaic acid? Azelaic acid is an ingredient that's derived for things like rye and barley. It's a dicarboxylic acid and it works incredibly well for multiple skin conditions. Right, and also it's found from the yeast on your skin that causes conditions like dandruff, tinea versicolor. It's a byproduct from this yeast that actually has a functional positive purpose and it was originally approved in 2003 at a 15% concentration for rosacea, later approved at a 20% concentration for acne, and it has some other unique points that make it functional and maybe a last line option where nothing else would. So unlike niacinamide, which we say is a jack of all trades, master of none, I think that azelaic acid is a jack of all trades and a master of some, okay? This is a new thing. I just came up with it right now. He was impressed, <laughs> he was impressed real time with that statement. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Azelaic acid is a mild exfoliant. I don't think it's a master at exfoliation, but I do think it's a master at some other things. So one, it's great for acne. It's approved for acne, and it's also got level one grade A evidence when treating acne, so great acne ingredients. What's nice about it, it's one of the few ingredients that treats post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from acne. So it's an ingredient that treats acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So if you're one of those people, it's great for that because it competitively inhibits tyrosinase, which is the enzyme that creates melanin. And it's also great for rosacea. Right, so it can be helpful for the redness of rosacea, the acne-like bumps of rosacea, and interestingly, even for acne, it's one of the few ingredients where there has not been any evidence to suggest or support bacterial resistance. So this can actually elevate other ingredients, help them stay effective, make them more effective, and the bacteria won't become resistant to this one as well. So you have exfoliation, acne, dark spots, rosacea, and maybe even a little bit of oil control. There's like a study or so that kind of supports that. So there may be some tertiary benefits that we really haven't even explored fully yet. And one of the few things where we have pretty much no other options for, which is post-inflammatory erythema, or the redness that comes after acne. So just a very well-rounded ingredient that actually works incredibly well. Now, one of the added benefits of azelaic acid that pretty much very few ingredients have is that it's category B or considered to be safe during pregnancy. So for a lot of the conditions that occur during pregnancy, whether it's acne, whether it's melasma or otherwise, azelaic acid can be a perfect solve for this because it does so much. So a lot of people can switch from their retinol to azelaic acid during pregnancy and then switch back to the retinol afterwards if they so choose. So azelaic acid's even safe in those conditions. Yeah, and this is going to be actually more and more of a problem because not only are ingredients not tested in pregnancy, which is, I guess, fairly reasonable, but they also have gotten rid of the historical pregnancy categories. Uh, I mean, I think this was now five plus years ago. You will have even less guidance moving forward in terms of what ingredients are safe in pregnancy. So having something that had been historically categorized as category B is exceptional. It will become even more rare, kind of like a Gen 1 Charizard or something. Uh, my son's into Pokemon. So like the, the, the longer this gets- Pokemon's coming back? Where have you been? I guess your daughter is like, she's only zero years old, but yeah, Pokemon is infinitely bigger than when we were kids. So anyway, category B ingredients are going to become more and more rare over time. And so this is a hero for that person. So all that being said, who would I not use this for? That's tough because it is really well-rounded. I have some patients that will say that azelaic acid stings their skin. And then for some reason, for some people, it just doesn't 
work well for them. It just doesn't do much for them. So I would say there's nobody I wouldn't try it on, right? right? There's nobody where I would say, hey, this is sort of contraindicated for you, but it doesn't work for everybody and some people will find it uncomfortable. And I will say that most of the prescription azelaic acids tend to be a little bit gritty, so people don't like that experience. Now, the over-the-counter products have gotten so good, actually, even just since we started creating content, their products that came out back when five years ago were much worse than they are today. So there's been just an evolution in the performance of these azelaic acid products. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it is interesting. There's no one I wouldn't recommend this to who start. Um, some people just won't like it. For some people, it truly really is more of a supporting helper ingredient. But guess what? That's fine. So simply, yeah, anyone can start this ingredient. It's not that complicated. And that actually takes us to our next portion of this, which is the layering videos. How do you layer azelaic acid however you want? What do you want to layer it with? Whatever you want. And this is actually what's been bothering me about the virality of this. There's a whole section of videos, and I'll just throw some up here. It's like how to layer azelaic acid, what not to pair azelaic acid with. This is like a whole trending conversation that shouldn't even exist. This is not as clean of an ingredient, as gentle an ingredient of peptides. So like peptides, do whatever you want, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day, although not approved for that, well, who cares? Like they're very gentle. Azelaic acid is at worst slightly irritating. And I would just leave it at that. It's an extremely simple conversation. Right, I think all the layering videos are sort of the same. There is no science to how we layer things. You know, we say thinnest to thickest, but that's just a hunch. It's a, it's a, a feeling. So ultimately you can layer these products any way that you want and it mixes well with most other ingredients. There's no ingredient that really cancels it out or vice versa. So let's talk about building into your routine. So simply cleanse. If you have a toner that you're using or an essence that you're using, you can use that. You could follow it with that azelaic acid. You could follow it with anything you want afterwards, or you can just simply moisturize. Me personally, when I'm prescribing it to my patients, I generally say cleanse, apply your azelaic acid, moisturize at night. In the morning, cleanse, apply your azelaic acid, apply your moisturizer and sunscreen. And that's really your entire routine. You can use it twice a day. I say start off once a day until your skin gets used to it, and then you can actually increase it to twice a day. This is especially helpful for people who have rosacea or acne. And then for people with dark spots, I usually tell them to use a retinoid at night and azelaic acid in the morning, just so you're getting the benefits of two different ingredients that target dark spots by different mechanisms. Yeah, exactly. So layering, just keep it in your same basic order, cleanse, treat, protect, thinnest to thickest, and pairing this ingredient, it really has complementary benefits to your retinoids, even to your vitamin C because of the dark spots, to any of your prescription or over-the-counter acne ingredients. I mean, there's really nothing that it can't be helpful for as long as it's directed towards a deliberate skin concern. And now, which one should you use? Well, the good news, like Dr. Shaw said, is products have really evolved. This whole product industry has just re been revolutionized in terms of how azelaic acid will feel on your skin. And we're gonna show you some of the best ones we've found. So when it comes to azelaic acid products that are available, you have different concentrations. You have 10, you have 15, and you have 20% generally. You have less than that, but I don't think those really should be counted as standalone azelaic acid products. Now, the azelaic acid 10% is very common. It's available over the counter. It's available from regular brands. And then 15 and 20% were historically only available by prescription. Now there are a few 15% that have trickled into the over the counter of the space, but let's talk about the 10% that are widely available. And then we'll talk a little bit about the prescriptions. Now I do say that most of the studies, especially by the pharmaceutical companies have been done on that 15 to 20%. I still think, and this is just my experience from working with patients, I still see really good results with my patients using just the 10% that are available over the counter. So I don't think it's inhibitory. If you do want a little bit more of a boost, say for example, you have rosacea, then it might be worthwhile to go to those 15%. So let's talk about our 10% azelaic acids that we have. The first one that I discovered was the one from The Ordinary. Now this one is affordable, it's widely available. It is a gritty, bad experience in my mind, but it was the only thing that was available when we first started creating videos and so, you know, I, I think we've made a lot of leaps and bounds since then, but still very affordable, still a good option, will still work for you. The next one that I discovered was Paula's Choice, 10% azelaic acid, a great formula, an improved formula compared to the ordinary, except this one has salicylic acid in it, which makes it not safe to use during pregnancy, and then no longer becomes a universal recommendation. And then the next one I discovered was from Naturium, which was a more elegant formulation, still relatively affordable, and an improved formulation over the rest, and then, we also have two new azelaic acid 10% that came out, which I think are improved 
in texture over any ones that came before. So we have the one from Anua, which is a Korean brand. Which Dr. Maxfield doesn't like the tackiness of this formula or tackiness of the Anua formulas in general. But when it comes to azelaic acid, which is very difficult to solubilize in formula, this is a this feels like a straight hydrating serum. It has zero grittiness to it. It blends in so nicely. And I'm actually, I was quite frankly shocked at how, how, well, how nice this product was. He stopped mid-sentence before shooting when he applied this product and said, wow. Like we were talking about something else and he interrupted himself just to, because he was blown away by the texture of this. And so for me, um, you know, it is amazing as an azelaic texture. And that's what he pointed out to me. He's like, yeah, but for an azelaic acid, it's incredible. And I agree. The only thing I don't like is similar to their TXA product. It, it's like a little bit sticky tacky. Um, it, it doesn't have the body that I liked out of the glycerin from the other one. So I just not the hugest fan, but it's very subtle. Uh, I think it's actually aesthetically very good. I did already apply it to this hand and it dried. So the tackiness completely goes away over time. So um, that was my only knock on this one. It's also kind of a beautiful color and packaging. I love their packaging and new packaging, a worthless uh, in terms of how it affects your skin, but I'd love it. Some other ingredients in this formula that help to support it. You have glycerin, you have allantoin, you have green tea, you have aloe, you have a little bit of niacinamide, you have centella, you have beta-glucan, squalane, so ceramides, it really is stacked with kind of everything. The only thing in it actually that I would say that some people are not gonna do well with is propylene glycol. Mm -hmm. Some people don't do great with propylene glycol. And that's probably why you're getting some of the texture issues that maybe you don't like as much. That's funny, that's actually too bad because that is a stacked list that really all does comprehensively and completely move towards one purpose. That's a killer formulation. And from a price standpoint, just pull that up here, let's say $22 online. And then we can contrast that to the comparator formulation, which is the Azelaic and Kojic from- Advanced Clarifying Serum from Allies of Skin. So this formula is just amazing. Uh, they, they were able to solubilize azelaic acid into just a sort of a beautiful, beautiful texture. There's no grittiness to it. When you apply it to the skin, what you'll notice is if you look at it, there's almost like a milkiness and it almost looks like it's going to be gritty, but then when you apply it, it really is just so smooth. Now this is 10% azelaic acid, but it packs a much heavier punch. I also love this packaging. I think it's absolutely beautiful and premium. It makes it a little difficult to read the bottle, but 1% kojic acid, 10% azelaic acid, 3% hexyl resorcinol. So just an overall good formula for dark spots. A little bit, I would say a little bit, very expensive. Yeah, so this one, let's say is $100, depending on whether or not the discounts are those like permanent discounts where the price is always crossed out, I'm not sure. But uh, 90 bucks, 100 bucks, texturally, as usual, crushed it. Allies of Skin never skimps on formulations or aesthetics, um, but you do pay for it on the back end. Absolutely. Now let's move on to our 15% azelaic acid serums. We have one that's available over the counter. We've talked about it a few times. This one is from Theramid. It's called Azid. It comes in a red bottle. I used it for actually a very long time. I cannot, since we moved, I cannot find this product anywhere. I'm just gonna have to buy it again at this point. Really a nice formula, comes out white. It's hydrating, but at the same time, maybe slightly a little bit more gritty. I wouldn't say gritty, but it, it's, it, it stings a little bit, maybe because it's a little bit too strong for me. But when I apply it, there is a sensorial experience that's not perfect, I would say. Yeah, and I, I feel like almost it's coming down too hard on it, but now in the world of these other two products, I think it's a fair criticism. Previously, it was just so far ahead of anything else, whether it was prescription or over the counter, it was just like the azelaic acid product. And because of the prescription strength in terms of 15%, especially when you're looking at rosacea, again, just a standout in the category. Aesthetically, it was excellent at the time. It is still very good on the skin. If you're looking to anchor on effectiveness and you want to stay over the counter, it's great. Um, this one comes from Spain, I believe. So, you know, it's still a superior product, I think, overall. And if you want more effectiveness, that's the one to go with. Absolutely. So just phenomenal product at the prescription level, available widely over the counter. We'll put some links below so you can find all the products that we're talking about instead of having to screenshot and go dig around. We'll try to make them a little easier for you to find. 
And then you can get them in prescription 15% and 20%. So you can go see your dermatologist. You can also check out Script. I believe you did launch an azelaic acid. We did, we have a couple different derivations. We have standalone azelaic acid, azelaic combined with spironolactone. So there's different ways to get it. Okay, cool. So if you wanna stack it with something else, you can check out scriptderm.com. This is a prescription service available in most US states. So this is really only available for our US followers. Um, maybe one day worldwide, I doubt it. The technical legal issues <laughs> with that, even doing it in the US is actually really quite co complicated, but you can check out a prescription strength without having to go see your dermatologist in person. You can see a dermatologist online through Scriptderm to get your azelaic acid, which also is stacked with some other ingredients to make it even more effective to target your skin concerns. But those are our favorite products. I'm glad to see more azelaic acid products out there. I'm glad it's getting some of the hype that it deserves. So would we say azelaic acid overrated or underrated maybe we get do it by skin problem oh okay so first when it comes to exfoliation overrated or underrated overrated when it comes to acne scars overrated or underrated scarring physical scarring overrated when it comes to dark spots overrated or underrated underrated when it comes to rosacea overrated or underrated underrated when it comes to anti-aging, overrated or underrated? Overrated. All right, there we go. So definitely underrated for the two main concerns, which are dark spots, acne, and rosacea. Those, it's an absolute monster when it comes to those three ingredients. We love this ingredient. Try to incorporate it into your skin routine. If you're new to it, start out once a day, then increase to twice a day. You can start out at 10%. If you see good results with it, you can increase to that 15 or 20% if you would like. And there are some great formulas out there. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. We'll see you next time.